Okay guys, welcome back. I'm attempting to do the project that I promised I would do, a video on crop rotation. So I want to start out here. I am a sixth generation farmer. There were five generations before me here in Brown County. Uh, I am a survivor of the 1980s farm crisis. I have had good neighbors who have helped me. I attended K-State, got a degree in agronomy, and I had professors that taught me those basic concepts. Uh, how to think about what you're doing, use critical analysis, uh, how to use economics and understand what your costs are, what your return are, and how to project uh, both now and in the future. And finally, how to uh, view soil as a living, breathing organism and not just dirt. Uh, my professors, most of them were survivors of the 1980s farm crisis, and so they had real, uh, relevant, hands-on learning. So that is a picture of the K-State motto. And on that motto, if you break that apart, rule by obeying nature's laws, that rule by obeying part, uh, that implies a social contract and individual responsibilities and uh, working towards a common good. The reason you have rules is for all of those purposes, the social contract, responsibilities, and it implies there is a common good that people work towards. Uh, nature's law law implies that uh, there is an objective truth, there is order to the system, and that man is a part of nature. For nature to have laws, man participates in the uh, uh, application of those laws. So there is uh, a big elephant in the room that very few farmers want to talk about, and that elephant is costs to farm and it's summarized in this graph right here so in this graph we see that it is becoming more expensive through time to farm and part of that is because we are in a, we are adopting a reductionist approach and the basic outcome of that is what is on the bottom there it's a vicious cycle what will that re what could that reductionist approach give us well it could give us what i'm showing you in this slide here uh, and that is not necessarily a desirable outcome for society uh, but if we follow the pictures that's where we're headed so here is my basic crop rotation on hill ground or marginal ground or where erosion is a greater concern i basically have a three-year crop rotation of uh, wheat, red clover, and then a row crop. And that row crop could be forage, sorghum, or soybeans. On my relatively flat bottom ground, I have what is called a six-year rotation, and that's four years of row crop, uh, then a small grain, and a red clover. The thing that you need to understand about crop rotations is that you can tweak these a lot and there is movement within them based upon uh, what the weather's doing to us, uh, what crop prices are, but you need to have a basic crop rotation. And as at most basic level, that is the crop rotation that I practice. Uh, there is Jet and I on a field of seed soybeans and so this slide here is a little basic analysis of cost of what it costs me to produce two crops uh, these numbers here uh, i did pull the custom rate numbers from iowa state but uh, iowa state i i think that as a kansas farmer my numbers are a little bit below that uh, the return prices, those are just average prices for feed grade organic crops. Obviously, if you sell seed or you sell human consumption, the price numbers are significantly greater than that. But hopefully, we can use, you can use those two slides as a basis of a start for discussion. 